Back in 2019, Kieran Tierney became the most expensive Scottish footballer of all time. His move to Arsenal came after he won a succession of trophies for his boyhood club Celtic, helped in no small part by the guidance of Brendan Rodgers. A standout member of the Invincibles team, Tierney is our guest at the Curry Club, the Scottish football sessions, as we review a stunning period of success in the East End of Glasgow. Kieran, thank you very much for coming on the show. We've got a lot to talk about the few years at Celtic, in particular under Brendan Rodgers, just trophy after trophy. And I have to say, when we secured this interview, Chris, we didn't invite him, he had the hand up, though. You're desperate to come, weren't you? See, yeah, Kieran? I was, yeah. I mean, followed uh, Kieran's career very, very closely. Um, you know, part of an extraordinary Celtic team and then yeah. what he achieved. And then he decided to do the dirty on Celtic. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he, he started, and then he started early. Away. Oh, by the way, just when we're on that kind of note, can I, can I tell you, I think I've read another interview you've done. Your three Celtic heroes, if you like, were who? Um, who have you heard? I think you've heard Bobo Baldi. The Bobo Baldi. Chris sure. Ward, my former. I, I know, I know, I'm coming to that. Who's the next one Henry? you've heard? Yeah. Who was the third? Scott Brown. Yeah, Scott Brown. Brown. The, the, I, I, love the fact, I love the <laughs> fact there is no Chris Sutton. I'm just delighted about <laughs> that. But, but I don't mind that. But Henrik, right, I get it. But, but why Bobo? You, why was, no, was, though? Was, he was just like a, a cult hero, <laughs> wasn't he? It was. If you were playing defence in school, you're like, I'm Bobo Baldi. <laughs> Straight away, I'm Bobo Baldi. <laughs> Try and play like him. I loved him, man. Me growing up at that time and such a successful team, you just looked up to everybody. Right? They were all your heroes um, all over the park. and. I just think it was a great time to grow up supporting Celtic, going to the games with your family. And How did you join? How did it come about, seven years old? Were you scouted? Yeah, so playing with my local boys club, um, Netherton, and I was like a year above myself. So I was playing under nines at the time, at seven. Left back? Left wing. Really? Left wing. So played there, and then after the games, the scout went to the coach, said, who's your number 11, whatever it was, and. Then I got to my dad and I went to Hamilton Palace and trained for a few years and just from there, just gradually worked the way up through the, the Youth Academy. Let's just talk a, a bit about the, the couple of seasons before Brendan Rodgers joined because the season prior, Ronnie Dyla was there and I think that was that was your real breakthrough. I know you'd played at the end of the previous season, but what, 34 appearances? I think at the time, like there was nothing wrong with the team spirit, nothing, I just think we hadn't gelled because you could see like the players we had, we had Armstrong, Gary McKay, Stevens, Christie, um, Griffiths was on fire as well. He scored 40 that season, didn't he? Yeah. Mm. Um, for me, Ronnie was amazing. Um, the one that gave my debut for Celtic, yeah. I always owe him my mm. life genuinely. So um, I, can't, I can't talk higher enough of him. How, how did you? How did you first get your opportunity to, you know, to play in the first? And there's a story, isn't isn't there? Um, you know, when you first get invited up to yeah. the first team squad. So it's a weird one. So I was. All the way through the age groups, maybe when people start growing, was that 13, 14, 15? Yeah. I never really. Yeah. So I was always kind of second choice at the ages. And then when I was 16, we went full time, but on an expenses contract, whereas more people got bigger contracts and that, then you move up to Lennox Town at 17. And I remember my dad saying, um, Oh, you maybe get your debut this season. I was like, No chance, can't even get a game for the 19s. <laughs> <laughs> There's no chance. And then. Um, I was training well, like I, I'm a good trainer, I work mm -hmm. hard and stuff like that. And then the squad for the 20s got um, picked, I wasn't in the squad. He had good, he had Aidan Markledoff, Joe Chalmers, Callum Waters with the three left backs, yeah. so it was hard to, it was hard to play. Do, um, you know, do you know why you were asked up to the first team though? No reason other than being a left behind <laughs> like, <laughs> from the squad. Mm -hmm. um, but I think maybe he'd heard I was a hard worker. Um, I think that's the thing he liked most about me because I was quite raw. Yeah. So like I wasn't finished the article of that, but he just loved my enthusiasm, he loved my work rate. Um, and he said that a few times in meetings in front of the, the first team boys at the time as well, which is amazing to hear. All of a sudden, Brendan comes in. Huge surprise, I think, that the fact that Celtic have got a manager of Brendan's calibre. I mean, can you remember the first time Brendan came in and the conversation which he had with the players? I mean, what, what, what did he say? So we went in there meeting on the first day, everyone in the meeting room, and he had a presentation, like, this is who I am, this is what I've done, this is what I believe, this is how I want to play. And then he introduced his staff as well with a PowerPoint each and what they've done. I just think we thought this is the ultimate professional, like this will change us as a team. Um, I think it's, it's helped Scottish football massively as well, him coming in. Um, and the first conversation I had with him was because there was rumours of me actually going to Arsenal that season yep. as well. Um, 
and I think they'd placed a bid and he spoke to me and said like, want you to stay here, we want you to play, get all these games under your belt, become a kind of seeing pro and not just a young player. Just going on further on that season then, I mean, there were so many highlights. Look, it was one of the best Celtic seasons, wasn't it, given the fact that, that you went invincible in the end, but 5-1 at Ibrox as well, which oh, was an historic victory, that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was amazing. And that, was that, the last, that was the last game of the season, wasn't That was it? April. Yeah. What about the first, we, we've not mentioned the 5 The 5-1 five five at the start, yeah. so the first one, I think that was also big for Musa because it was one of his first starts, I think. Yeah. We thought like we knew what Griff could do in games like that, so we're thinking, let's hope Musa. And Musa stepped up, and it's three yeah. goals straight away, celebrating like that. Yeah. And I was like, what a guy! Significant as well, I think, because it was Brendan Rodgers' first game against Rangers. Yes, yeah, first was. time you'd met them since. And the it was revenge from the the yeah. semi final, and I think he said that in his team talk as well. He's yeah. like, remember how you felt, how low you felt after getting beaten penalties, which probably was one of the lowest I've ever felt. Um, and make sure you don't feel like that again. And the way we went out and played that day was brilliant. Uh, and that game was, I don't know whether you'd say it's famous for, Joey Barton had come north of the border, hadn't he, and had a lot to say about yeah. Scott. Yeah, they had Scott a Brown, yeah. bit of Barnley, didn't they, with each other? Uh, how, how was Scott, you know, because Scott always seems to handle those situations pretty well. I mean, did, you know, was he was he riled by that? Did he laugh? I mean... I think he laughed more than anything. I think if I was coming up against a guy like Scott Brown, I'm, I don't want to write him up because I know he thrives under things like that. Yeah. Um, so no, it didn't bother him. I think he'd done an interview after it as well, which was, yeah. he just got his little word in. Like, I don't think he he'd did. done too much in social media. He just got his word in after the game, which is mm. what he kind of does best. But I mean, how does it feel now still to be, to be sitting here and talking about the invincible season? Chris brings it up all the time. I mean, to have gone the whole campaign, I mean, that is just some feat, isn't it? It's amazing, and you probably don't realise now till you sit and talk about it. At the time, you're just you're just living, like you're not thinking about it, and it's just normal to you because you're just doing this every day. You're in the routine, um, and proper invincibles because you won the cups as well. So that... that's the only ones that count, and it is it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think he's, so. he's an Arsenal player now. I was talking about Rangers, Darren. Oh, I don't, I'm I'm about you were talking about <laughs> Ars Arsenal invincibles as well. They didn't um, win the cups, yeah. did they? No, they didn't. No. Listen, let's not argue over invincibility. Right, on to the next season then. So the momentum's really picked up under Brendan Rodgers. Getting back into the Champions League was, was clearly huge. Next time round, I think it was a bit more straightforward. Played Astana again. That was huge, because yeah. then you go into another really tough group, by the way. You draw PSG, Bayern and Anderlecht. There was criticism of Brendan for him not changing his approach. I mean, as, I mean, you know, not it's a criticise Brendan necessarily, but I mean, how, how did you feel as as players if you're all, I mean, you know, had, had he changed his tactics at all? Had he set you up differently? Because he always came out and said that this is this is the way we're going uh, to play. I think, I think we were kind of thinking from the year before, the first two games, if you look at, the approach that probably people wanted to take was the back five. Yeah. We went to Barcelona, we tried that, and it was 7-0. And then he probably thought, we're doing this and we're, we're going all in, we're pressing, and this is how I see you is perform your best, and then we go and draw three each with City. So I think that's where we took our confidence from. Although we knew we were coming against teams better than us, with better players, that's how we played at our best. So we had to be our best to try and get a result in these games. But you were never put off when another big defeat came around, like like the PSG? No, I don't, I don't think you could be. Like, it was tough to take. They were hard times, although, like, before the season, you just think, let's just get in the Champions League and we'll give it our best shot. But when you're there, you don't want to be there just to be a number and a team who gets beat every week. Was your opinion not at the time that you thought it might kind of bruise Brendan a little yeah. bit, defeats like that? Well, I think so. I, I think his, yeah, I think um, his, his European record before he arrived at Celtic wasn't the greatest. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I think the first season, you, you have to cut him a bit of slack. You know, you mentioned Beershev, we were standing in the, in the tunnel when he came out after the game and he, he was as white as a ghost, he wasn't was. he? Um, then the first season. I, I, th I think it's really difficult, um, you know, when you're talking about Bayern Munich and PSGs to compete. But I think people were feeling, you know, that, that Celtic aren't learning the lessons. But I take your point. When there's individual errors, it's hard for a manager to, to come out yeah. and, to, you know, for, for us to criticise the tactics when players are misplacing passes or... And maybe the reference you know, point positioning. was Man City. And that's maybe why you kept on coming back to them. To yeah. Them. I mean, having yeah. seen what Celtic could do on, a, on an occasion mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, and, you know, it's... You know, Brendan Wood set up 
to play a, a, a balanced game. I mean, talk about Ange Postacoglu now, and it's all about the process. That's that's the way he sets teams up. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's just not your night. The, the, you know, the issue Celtic had that season is that there were too many wallopings in the in the yeah. Champions League. And mm-hmm. I, I always, you know, you talk about the players responding at weekends. That's not an easy thing to yeah. do to come back after a you know a heavy defeat. Was it tough to get themselves up? Yeah, it was tough. And um, although people know you're playing against PSG, like there's. Like they're still criticising they could be the best team in the world, but as I said, we our system like people say maybe the system, but our system was to defend well and be compact, yeah. be hard to beat. And there's just times where we weren't, and the players, the runs were too good, or we were a second or we switched off or we were ball watching. Like we we made a lot of mistakes that goals could have been avoided easily. I think it's you know it's something where. You know, we talk about Brendan's uh, time at Celtic. That would probably be the, you know, one area where he would have been slightly disappointed. But I do take Kieran's point. You know, Celtic are supposed to compete, or there's an expectation amongst the support, and there always has been, yeah. because of Celtic's history. That you know, you go and you compete against PSGs and Barcelona, and and you know, they're they're able to to lavish far, you know lots of money on players and what have you, but there's still the expectation within the fan base yeah. that the team have to perform and compete at that level. Hard it's to live up easy. to the... Yeah, the I, I, I don't think the, fa- the fans would expect you to win, no. but there's times where you expect you maybe, like... All of us were fighting, of course, but just to show it a bit more, and yeah. the results never showed it. Like, we were all out there giving it our best and trying to keep up with Neymar, <laughs> Cavani, Mbappe. Like, we were trying our best, but we were still Alston young and well. Neymar. <laughs> I think it was something that worked for everybody, but it was uh, the hardest decision of my life. Like I, I was so excited like to go to Arsenal, be in the Premier League, play with and play against the best players in the world. And it is such a massive club, there's no denying Arsenal's massive. Um, but you were leaving your club. It was heartbreaking. And that season, you go on to complete the treble again, beat Motherwell in both the cup finals. Towards the end of that season, though, we're just talking about maybe Rangers felt they were, try- they were getting closer to you, trying to close that gap. The two games you played towards the end of that season against them, I think it was 4-0, 5-0. It felt in many ways like the gap had grown to the biggest it might have been in a couple of years. Did you yeah. did you feel it the same? No, but it was still... I think the games were getting a bit tighter. Mm. Um, they were getting better, certainly, but I think we were getting better still. Yeah. It was a time where we were still progressing and like the players who we signed just kicked on. Like Scott Sinclair was going for fun, Dembele was going for fun. I think Dembele even gave Incham a penalty that day. Like he said, do you take it if you <laughs> right. want? Here is being very nice, they were yeah. pumpings, weren't they? And, and Celtic maybe had their moment in the semi-final a couple of years prior when they decided the big change, Brendan Rodgers. Maybe that 4-0, 5-0 was when Rangers felt they had to go and do something yeah. major as well. Stephen Gerrard comes in. Yeah, I'll come, I'll come yeah, well, I just want to ask you, what, yeah. what was what was Brendan like in the dressing room? Was he always was he always controlled? Did he ever lose his temper? Ninety-nine times, uh, ninety-nine percent, I would say controlled. Mm. But if he needed to, like if some if he felt somebody wasn't trying or something like or switched off and wasn't aware, then he would he would he'd go through somebody, but not like in a way where. The, the an old school way where yeah. you'd expect that, like shouting and bawling. If it was no no at half time or we're down one now, we could come out calm and composed because that's what he was like teaching us to be like, and that's the way he came across. So he just brought like composure to our team so much. Did he did he encourage discussion? Did he want opinion from within the dressing room? Yeah, a hundred percent. And he, even during training days and that, he said, if anybody's got questions, come and ask me. And he's like, you don't feel comfortable doing it in front of the team, come and ask me in my office. And the way we were playing, the way it was, how, what could you ask? Because everything was working. Like, Absolutely. But who were the ones who would not question Brendan, but have an opinion? It's hard to say, but I think, in a way, like because he was such a big name who came in and we just believed in everything. So I, I don't remember one time where there was a, um, like a question back. You would ask a question if you wanted to know an answer, but it wasn't if he told you to do this and somebody would say, like, no, I don't agree, I think I should be here. Like, I, it was none of that. And I think that was just because we respected what he'd done in the game and what he'd done for all of us as players. Your development was just incredible at that point. You won Player of the Year again that season. I think it was the third in a row. You don't drink, do you? No. So that's a testament to I think to it's a modern-day thing, Chris, with players now. Is it? No, not your day. Not all players. <laughs> no, listen, obviously a model professional, but that's... 
You've not changed, have you? I like, nah, I hope not. Mm. Um, try not to change, but just the same. I think that comes from who you're around and your family and stuff like that. So it'd be unfair if on them if I changed and turned into like what would be your typical kind of football kind of image. Do you still carry your boots in the Tesco bag? Nah. I love that. That <laughs> was a great, I I love that. great picture. Shoot, let's get back to the football, yeah. right? Get away from carrying boots. Uh, going into that last season then, um, obviously we know what happens in the end and what changed, but Stephen Gerrard appointed at Rangers. Brendan Rodgers had the history with him as yeah. well at club level. There was a healthy competition between the two of them. Did Brendan not leave him out of a game in Real Madrid, Real Madrid, Real Madrid yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And yeah. so you just wondered whether there there was an edge there. Well, there was. But, yeah, well, you yeah, could see that eventually in the games. Couldn't but you? I was still wondering. Daryl didn't get to that, and, uh, <laughs> and there, you know, but there was great rivalry. But it was about, you know, what Stephen Gerrard could do in a short space of time, and about recruitment, bringing players in who could challenge that team. That that always was going to be a big ask in that first yeah. season. To, uh, to touch Celtic, and, and so it proved. You won another trophy, which ended up being Brendan's last, the seventh trophy in a row, Aberdeen in the final again. That was 1-0. Let's get to February then. I know you had some injury problems, but you play against Motherwell, I think, which was ultimately Brendan's last game. The news yeah. came just after that. I mean, I assume there was a huge amount of shock because it happened Massive. so quickly in the NQ, his departure. I just remember the night before, speaking to my mates, and I said, no, nah, there's no chance. Mm. Like We've not heard anything. Like It's just people talking and creating rumours and then the next morning I woke up and I'm sure my mum had the radio on and she told me and I was like, it's happened like so quick. Yeah. Um, well, why did you think it happened at that speed in the end? You think it was just the offer or did you feel he was ready to go? I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm not sure how long they'd maybe been talking or how long it takes to agree something like that. Um, no inkling from the players? Nothing. Mm. Nothing. What was um, said after then? Among the players. And did you speak to Brendan? Yeah, I, he contacted us all individually, um, saying thank you. Like, we made a lot of history together. We had a great time together. And, and I was obviously thanking him for everything he'd done for my career. Like, he, he took me from that young kind of player who was a bit raw and just wanted to challenge people to someone who can like, play in different positions and different systems, understand the game. Um, as do, I think do you understand the, the ill feeling? Some of the Celtic fans still have, given what was on the line. No, of, of and course the you do, of man. Departure. Of course, um, as a Celtic fan myself, you want the best mm -hmm. people there, and we knew he was a, a world class manager. And when you lose your world class manager, of course you're going to be gutted. Yeah. And emotions take over. Like it's, it's totally that like, you understand it. Of course you do, um, because the players were gutted as well. Um, but that's that's football, and that's that's yeah. not just at Celtic. That's that's every club it, it, and every. Yeah. I mean, just. You know, I think from the, from the the supporters' perspective, it was it was a surprise to everybody. Yeah, I can't actually. You know, I'm just thinking back whether there were any rumblings before. I I don't think. I, I think it was well hidden, wasn't it? All of a it sudden, was. it happened. But I think the feeling was, you know, Celtic were you know building for the for the ten, of course. Mm. Uh, but I mean, my feeling on it was, well, if you're going to go, just see out the season. Yeah, supporters would would have felt let down, and a lot of people felt that way. But do you know what? I mean, we're sitting here now. That was that was then, and it's, it's, a, it's a sour end yeah. in some respects. It's an incredible spell. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, I think that's the bigger point, and, you know, Kieran's touched on it. You now look back at what Brendan Rodgers, what he took over and what he achieved, you know, the invincible season, uh, you know, the treble, seven out of seven trophies. Yeah. I mean, that is... That is remarkable. I understand the ending, and it, you know, I, I still think I'm surprised. I wonder, wonder whether Brendan actually regrets that himself. But I think you know, you you can't knock what he did. But let's just complete that that season story anyway, because Neil Lennon's in immediately. You've got more trophies to win that season, and, and ultimately you do. And then we get to the summer, and obviously the move comes for you. It's so hard. There, there wasn't one moment where I was thinking in my head. I want to leave Celtic. Mm -hmm. like my, you knew it was ahead as well, potential yeah. to win nine and all that kind no, of stuff. No, hundred percent. But when I was going through all the, the tough injuries, mm. um, I think it was Aberdeen away in the league when we won the league, like I could run maybe 30% maximum speed. Like If you watch that game back yeah. and you look at me, you're like, he's miles off, mm. he's can't run, can't do anything, can't turn. And I think I sat down and I was like, I need to go off here, I'm done. But the fans were cheering me. 
I was right next to him and I went, right, I'll try again. Then five minutes later, back down. And I was quite emotional inside because I was like, I know my season's over. And you'd heard all the rumours about what's happening this season. And you, you, you know if a club are going to sell you or no, you've, you've got a feeling inside you. Like, Did they do enough to try and keep you? It's hard to say. But there was nothing ever, like, there was no meetings to try and keep me, like, stuff like that. There wasn't a contract or nothing or... It's just something, and that's not their fault, it's just something at the time it made sense for everybody, really. Mm. They they had brought someone through the Youth Academy who they were so proud of, and he's going for a record fee. Mm. And then I'm someone who loves the club. I've gave everything. I've gave, like, my 100% commitment from the day I joined at seven until the day I left. And I was going on to play for a, a huge club as well who believed in me and put a lot of faith in me. And, yeah. Backed that up with the the twenty five million as well. So I think it was something that worked for everybody, but it was uh, the hardest decision in my life. Like I, I was so excited, like to go to Arsenal, yeah. be in the Premier League, play with and play against the best players in the world. And it is such a massive club. There's yeah. no denying Arsenal's massive. Um, but, but you were leaving it, your club. It was heartbreaking. Yeah, but but, yeah. but was. was it because of what you'd achieved as well at Celtic? You know, you go, you know. <laughs> You go three three trebles in a row, which is pretty remarkable. What you, you know, and you, you talk about you know growing up, seven year old, um, you know always always supported Celtic, always loved Celtic, played for the team. You win three trebles, and it's it's a you know it's it's what's next. And I think I was one at the time. It, it, you know, there's, there's always an element of Celtic fans when a player leaves a club, they get stick because they're leaving the club, which which they love, which is, you know... Especially because and, what was yeah, on but, the line. But, but I think everybody understands that. There's, yeah. always, there's always that element. But I do think that, um, it, you know, the majority of the Celtic fans when Kieran left thought, well, you know, good luck to him. And they're proud go, now go that it's still the record you know, big, uh, well, a Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the way he conducted himself at Celtic and the way he's come down and conducted himself at, uh, you know, at Arsenal. I, you know, oh, there's I a men's pride, I think, yeah. from... All the Celtic fans, everyone in Scotland as well. I think we can both see that the effect has had oh. on on Kieran leaving Celtic, yeah. the way the way that he's spoken and the and the criticism. But it was only a small, yeah. of my, as, as far as I could see. But how much he cares and how much the club. Tweet club. You said to be fair, and the, the side, he actually backed me. I was <laughs> he did. Buzzing. I know he did. He <laughs> was buzzing. Because you know, there, there's always a, a a time when somebody, you know, is a natural time when somebody uh, could move on. And, and as I say, if if Celtic hadn't won anything in those previous three years, or not won a title or four years or whatever it was, then you can understand, as Kieran is progressing, Celtic fans saying, well, do you know what, stay and help us win something. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's getting bored of winning trophies. <laughs> so, you know, come down, it's, yeah. it's, it's another challenge, a different challenge. You so. backed him and you're still not yeah. in his top three. So, anyway, on that note, we've, we've kept you for a while. Thank you very much, really enjoyed that. Oh, Thank pleasure, you. man. Great to meet you. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers. Sport Pods.